in our readings this week. Something that we hear in each is a need for us to prepare ourselves for what is coming. It's kind of ironic, really. In this time of year, preparing is what we're all about. Some are preparing for visitors, some for travel, and still others to bring joy and love to those they care for. On the flip side, some are preparing for another year alone. Their loved ones no longer with us or too far away in order to get together for the holidays. This holiday season is really a mixed bag of emotions. And in the midst of all the hustle and the bustle and our worldly concerns, it is easy for us to lose sight of what the holiday is all about. The manifestation of God's love revealed to us in and through Jesus. In our lessons throughout Advent, <clears throat> they are intended to help us refocus our attention on how great that love really is. It is a love that offers us more joy than any family visit or present ever can. It offers us hope in our lowest moments. And it helps sustain us along life's journey until that day when, when we know it in its fullness. Problem is, it is hard to see or experience this love if our focus is on the worldly and not on Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. In today's gospel, John confronts the people of Israel, as well as us, commanding their attention. Something big, he says, is about to happen, and all must stand ready to receive the goodness that it will bring. It's funny that the lectionary would use this reading in our run up to Christmas. Because John's not talking about the birth of Jesus. Jesus is already 30 years old at this point. And he's surely not talking about the long awaited second coming because Jesus has not yet endured the agony of the cross. He's talking about something much more immediate. Instead, he is telling Israel to set aside those things that distract them. Those things they think are so important. To see what God is doing in their midst. Think about it. What might our Christmas preparations look like if instead of at the birth or forward to the second coming we took the time to look around at what God is doing in our midst right now here in this place in the lives of those we know and those we don't or even what God might be doing or encouraging in and through us to help others turn their attention away from life's distractions, life's hardships, life's demands, and towards the love of God revealed in Jesus. For one thing, I think we'd worry a lot less. It's so easy to stress out as as we make all our preparations, trying to get things just right for those who we want to feel our love and welcome. We don't want to overlook anything that needs to be done that might distract, that might get in the way. In our efforts, we often get so wrapped up in the details 
so much of the busy work that by the time those we are trying to prepare for arrive, we're exhausted. And the welcome and, and love we want them to know, well, it's still there. Just not in the perfect way we had envisioned. Because it's not truly found in the things that we do. It comes from here. In the heart. And if the heart is not ready to share the love we want people to know, then all the other preparations we do, all the other craziness we endure, fall short of their intended purpose. How do we overcome this? We listen to John. By preparing ourselves. So that when the time comes, we are rested and able to do the things that need to be done and to be able to share that which we wish to share. So often people hear John's proclamation thinking that we must make the way smooth for others. That we must prepare the way for God by making it easy for God to get to us. As if God could not get to us otherwise. That's not what John is saying. He's telling all who would listen to prepare themselves. So that when God comes, all are ready to welcome God and share in the goodness God's love offers. And nobody, by the way, he says, should delay their efforts. Because this time is not some day yet to come. Or something might happen in the future. John's witness is that God is here. God has come as promised. And our faith in the living word reminds us that God is still here today the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to see this. And seeing it, like the song of Zechariah that we heard in Canticle 16, sung by the father of John the Baptist at his birth. Our hearts and our mouths are opened to share in the joy that is revealed. Not in the past, and not yet to come, but in the here and now, in our midst. My question is, do we have eyes to see it? Okay, maybe that's a silly question. We all have eyes to see. But just because we can see does not mean we always do or can. Sometimes... Sometimes that which is right in front of us can go unnoticed. And I'm not talking just metaphorically. Bumps and bruises and missed opportunities are all examples resulting from our own blindness, our own attentiveness to our surroundings. The good news, the good news is just what John the Baptist proclaims throughout his ministry. That God's love for us is so great that it comes to us where we are. It doesn't wait for us to seek it out. To know what John says, all we need do is set aside those barriers, those distractions that we have created in our lives. Barriers that blind us to not only what is before us, but as an old blessing says, is behind us. Beside us, beneath us, above us, and within us as well. Realizing this can help us to change our focus from all the glitter and glam we celebrate this season with to a simplicity, a simplicity found in the event that we try to remember now, I'm not suggesting we do away with all the Christmas decorations or that 
we refrain from gifting those we love. Or setting aside the hopes and dreams that seeing that joy in someone else brings. What I am encouraging us to do is to look around. Even if it's only for a short time each and every day to see what God is doing in our midst. And then to give thanks for what we see. Helping others to do the same. One thing we learn from Scripture is that if, if we prepare our hearts with even a tenth of the energy and commitment, we prepare our homes or our lives for the true joy Christmas brings, we will find more joy than we had ever known. And not the joy of things, but the joy of love. Love that is shared with us because of who we are. God's beloved. But for this holiday season, let us make preparations to not only rejoice in the gift that we have already received, or the life we are told is promised, but in the love we know now, now, in and through Jesus. So that each of us might say to all with ears to hear and with a heart filled with the joy of love, thank you, God, for loving me. Amen.